I got to save myself from temptation, but I've also got to save myself from the ugly deeds that spread ugliness among humanity. That's all included inside of this word. That's when a group of men surprised King Dawood in his chambers. He's the prophet that had 99 wives, right? No, it says, Hey, just use Bayina TV. We break down every section of the Quran into straightforward, understandable pieces. I started Bayina TV to make the Quran accessible for people of all levels of understanding. The beauty and guidance found within its passages shouldn't be limited to scholars. Click the link to start your journey into the Quran and Arabic today. Qarun used to want to show off his wealth especially in a poor neighborhood, to make people feel bad. The, the, gar the two gardeners in Surah Al-Kahf, one guy was showing up how much, he, how much bling he's got. And this is a very severe thing to Allah. This is hell-worthy. When you, the gifts God has given you, Allah has given you, you use them to sh demonstrate your status and put somebody else down. You could have parked your newly bought Mercedes way in your own, you know, in, in your own house. You parked it across your friend's house who's looking for a job and rides a bicycle to work. And you say, yo, bro, just got it. Alhamdulillah, so grateful. You could have been grateful in your garage, right? This is, this is Isbal. This is actually Isbal. But then when you don't have that view, then what happens? Oh my God, uh, my, my pants are below the ankle. I'm going to go to hellfire, you know? And then that becomes your religion. And then since I'm going to hell anyway, they're below the ankles. Let me drop some other standards too. Do you understand the seriousness of this issue? So we have to really understand what the major sins are. And then on, on top of the major sins, now let's get word by word in this ayah. Previous ayah said, Ahsanu, they excelled. Remember, they did their best. That was in the past tense. But this ayah is saying, the ones who did their best who continue to ignore, to continue to avoid the present tense is being used. It's strange to use the past tense and then use immediately what? The present tense. Tenses don't work in Arabic, in classical Arabic, the way they work in English now. The purpose of switching tenses were many. And one of those purposes was to illustrate continuity. This is actually saying that they keep having to get away from major sins because the major sins keep coming in their face. And they keep having to do the work to get away from them. They can't just, oh, I got out of that life. It's away from me now. The devil brings it back. The old friends bring it back. The, when they drive by the old neighborhood, it comes back. At the workplace, it's thrown in their face. It, the major sins are not some hidden away thing on top of a mountain somewhere. It's always in your face, the major sin. And the major sins are always, and you have to go out of your way to sidestep them. And that's where we get the word yajtanibun, come from janib. Janib means the side. Junub actually means closeness to. So, wasahibi bil jamb in the Quran, if you're riding on a bus and there's a person next to you, that's wasahib bil jamb, right? They used to use janab for a guy who wanted, really badly wanted to rent, win a race, a horse race. And he just at all costs, I need to win. It was not a, it's not a short, it's like a marathon, right? So he would, he would use the two horses in the marathon. One he's riding on and one that he's holding the rope of. So when this one gets tired, he can jump on that one. It was a stupid idea because they're getting tired at the same time. But still, he tried. <laughs> this guy was, this was a, a Janab thing. The point is, it's right next to you. From it became kind of the, the Salbul Ma'khad. When you say Jannaba or Janaba, also means to make sure you get as far, you, you get rid of the closeness. So ijtanaba means to actually get, something's trying to get close to you and you're trying to get far from it. You know, like the opposite sides of, sides of a magnet that repel each other. So these are the people that constantly repel major sins. What that tells you then is major sins keep coming after them. They keep, keep running after them. The, the, temp, the urge to just get into riba keeps coming after. That, per, that, that co-worker keeps trying to hit on them. Something keeps happening over and over again. And they're just trying to get away from it. And what, what Allah says then is, fawah. And by, before I go on, the, the, the perfection of the Qur'an, the, the avoiding ijtanaba, the past tense of it is used once. 
وَاجْتَنَبُ الطاغوت. And every time Allah mentions major sins, He uses the present tense. Ibn Ashur correctly points this out. It's remarkable. Getting away from false gods is a once-in-a-lifetime decision. You left the false gods, you came to the worship of one God. That's why the past tense is used. But getting away from major sins is a, an everyday struggle. It's a continuous battle. So he uses the present tense to illustrate the continuity. Incredible. So, اجتنبوا الطاغوت and يجتنبون كبائر الإثم والفواحش. Now, let's keep moving. This is, this is about the, uh, the idea of, of Janab, but I already explained that to you. Now, الذين يجتنبون كبائر الإثم Let's talk about the word الإثم, which I keep calling sins. Quran has lots of words for sins. One of them I already mentioned to you, سيئات, أساؤ. Right? The corpse. Remember that one? Ugliness indeed. The, the word ithm was used for a camel when it was slow. It slowed down because you put too much on it. When the camel, naqa became athima, when you put too much on it and it slowed down. When something slows down because there's too much load on it. That's why they used to call alcohol ithm. Because it slows down your brain. So the, one of the words for alcohol in Arabic is actually ithm. It's pretty cool. Uh, no, alcohol is not called the, the phenomenon. كَذَاكَ الْإِثْمُ تَذْهَبُ بِالْعُقُولِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْإِثْمُ الْوِزْرِ And ithm is anything super heavy. You know, like athletes, in order to improve their speed, they'll put these weight, weighted vests on that have extra pounds on them and then they'll run on the track. Because if they can... And definitely the point of it is to slow them down. But if they can break through that, then running without that is much faster, right? So the idea of a weight that is meant to slow you down is an ism. And from it, you get the idea of a, a, uh, a sin that is going to cost you, that is going to be a levy on you. And that's why it's actually used for a heavy fine. Asam. Yalqa asama. A heavy fine that's going to be burdened on you is actually called an asam. And so with these meanings, when you get to the word ism, it means these are things that are punishable. These are things that whose burden you have to carry. You can't just shed the burden like being late to class. Okay, I was late, but it's okay. I'll be on time tomorrow. But if some major sin happened, you're like, it's okay, I made Toba, you move on. No, no, no. You got to sit on this one a little bit. You got you to gotta feel the weight of that sin a little bit. In fact, Musa alayhi salam, in his mind, committed a major sin when he punched the guy and the guy died. It was murder, right? And Allah forgave him immediately. When he forgave him immediately, he should have not felt what anymore? He should have not felt the weight of the sin anymore. But Allah Azza wa Jal, later on, when he reaches, uh, you know, Madian, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal even describes when Musa alayhi salam helped those women, he said, inni, inni, lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. Whatever opportunity of good deeds you give me, I could use it because my back is broken from the burden. Faqr actually means of, the, of your back to be broken from a burden. And this is going back to the idea that the ism, the burden of the sin, is so heavy on him that he wants to do more and more good because in al-hasanat yurhibna sayyiat, good deeds can then remove the burden of bad deeds. This is the proportionate response. The idea of good deeds is if I've done something bad, the only way I can fix that is I got to do some good stuff. Not, I'm going to do good stuff so I can do bad stuff. <laughs> I'm going to get the credit, then I can use it on the slot machine and debit. Oh, now I, my reserves are low. I got to get some extra credit, then I can use the debit. You know, Ramadan mentality. Get all the credit, and then from AIDS, all the debit. Then 11 months of debit, then we'll have one month of credit, and then we'll debit it again, right? That's not the mentality in the Quran. The point in the Quran is, yeah, you'll make a mistake, but immediately after a mistake, what should you do? Run towards opportunities to do good things. That's, that's the concept that's being taught here. Now, let's talk about al-fawahish. I didn't know this. I actually learned this today uh, about fawahish. I assumed that I knew what the word meant. I didn't. Al-mutafahish is al-ladhi yatakallafu sabban nas wa yata'ammaduhu. A, a, a fahisha person, a mutafahish, is someone who purposely insults people and says bad words to them. For someone who's really sarcastic, mean, you know, trolling, nasty with their, their, their criticism, uh, and is doing it on purpose to cause pain, that kind of person, meaning your mother-in-law, no, I'm kidding, um, 
إذا متفحش الفحش التعدي في القول والجواب فحش actually means you you go too far when you talk like you you said something bad and they didn't hear you or they didn't respond did you hear me I called you fat did you get that you know how I called you fat because you're really overweight you're not saying anything is that because you're too fat to respond and you keep you keep poking and poking and poke this is fush this is fush and then after that if somebody does respond or if somebody you know said something you know they say i don't like what you said oh you don't like it huh you want me to stop there are some people when you ask them to stop that's when they go the extra 10 miles first they say oh you want me to stop and then there's a pause like how much how much worse can i make this and then they dig their hole way deeper that kind of a person is called al-fuhsh. Those are the kinds of people you're even scared to tell them to stop because they're going to make it even worse. That's, that's their nature. They, they just make things even worse. So, fi dam fahishan. They used to use this for bug bites. If the bug is, bug is so bad that it made you bleed or it created a scar or a huge like, what the hell is that? What the bugs is that? It's not that ugly. It's not that nasty. It's not fahish. It's okay. You'll live. Like if you're just whining about a little mosquito bite, oh, come on. It's not fahish. But if like a, a, like a locust bit you or something like a scorpion or like a, you know, something, and it's like a huge, ugly, nasty thing. And you're like, oh, that's disgusting. Oh, that's fahish. So it was associated with something ugly and disgusting. That's why, again, the ancient Arabs were not politically correct. They were okay with shaming people on their appearance. Fahushat al mar'a. The Arabic dictionary, by the way, full of insults. It is so entertaining. It is full of insults. Oh my God. When an old lady becomes really old and scary and nasty looking, they say fahushat. Like if she looks like she's from a horror, like a, almost like a zombie type look, like the hair is all like, you know, I, I can't do it well, but you get the idea. We have Islam taught us, you know, respect for our elders. This was before Islam, okay? So what, the, what they used to do is for like a scary looking old lady, they would say, Fahushat al-Mar'a. So all of this has to do with istiqbahun, al-istiqbah and the shar' al-fahish al-azim, al-qubh fil-bukhul, actually. Ugliness that manifests itself as greed, someone who's ugly with their money, someone who's ugly with their speech, someone who's ugly with their character, all of that is fahisha, which actually boils down to mannerisms and how you treat people. Allah says they stay away from major sins and from all things that create ugliness between people. That's fawahish. Now, kinayatan ustu'amilak kinayatan an zina. What's kinaya? Say something without saying it. That's kinaya. Okay. Fawahish is used in the Quran as a kinaya for adultery. Or fahisha is used as a kinaya for fornication and adultery. It's not the Arabic word for fornication or adultery. It's the hint. The Quran is creating a hint. Now, the problem is fornication and adultery in every society is beautified. It's associated with the temptation of beauty. It's not associated with ugliness. And this is the Quran's spiritual worldview. It is teaching something that didn't exist. It's teaching that zina, as tempting as it may be, as much as it may be drawn, uh, drawing a person in because of its beauty is actually ugliness. The reality of it is, is fawahish. And it's pointing at another reality too. Fawahish will make the inside of a person ugly, the true self ugly. And that, that these are the hikam inside of this word. And also there's other hikam because fahisha is used for extreme lack of control in speech, right? So this person is an animal with their tongue. Well, when someone's an animal with their body, they're, fah they're, they're fahish, you see? And similarly, this, uh, it's associated with extreme selfishness and the act of fahisha is extreme selfishness. You have an urge. You, you, the Allah gave us the institution of marriage to fulfill that urge. And you could take, because the institution of marriage makes you take responsibility. But if you don't want to take that responsibility and just fulfill your urge, then you're, you know, you're extremely selfish. You don't care about the other person, not in this dunya and not in the akhirah. Because so long as it's convenient, you're there. 
the moment it becomes inconvenient or you just don't want to move on or whatever, then you can quickly just dump and go and there's no sense of accountability, right? So, so the idea, all of those ideas are merged together. It, this wouldn't be there if Allah just said zina. But it's there when he says al-fawahish and the plural suggests that it's not limited to one thing. By the way, even something ugly like slandering somebody, you know, making up stories about them or spreading rumors about them. In Surah An-Nur, Allah describes all of that as fahisha. You would think Surah An-Nur would describe zina as fahisha. Actually, Surah An-Nur also goes out of its way to describe slander and rumors as, as a kind of fahisha too. Those who love to spread, spread fahisha among the believing community. There was a rumor spread about Aisha, right? Allah doesn't say those who spread rumors. What did he say? Those who spread fahisha because they're spreading ugliness and they're depicting the ugliness of somebody's character and they're going out of, and it's an extremely selfish thing to do and a, and a ruthless thing to do. And, and that's why that word was used. So, Allah has put a lot inside of this word. Now, the thing is, some of the fawah, like zina is a major sin. Slander, by the way, also a major sin because it's punishable. Thamanina jalda. Some, something that's even punishable in this dunya, that's got to be a major one. Those are big ones. Now, the issue is, what is, what is, think about slander for a moment. Slander isn't, I falsely accuse someone. That's, that's muhtam. But then if you heard my accusation and said, I mean, he said it. He didn't just make it up, obviously. So it's got to be true. You have direct evidence or no? You know the case yourself or no? You know the person's motives or no? You know nothing, right? You have this. And then what do you do? I hope it's not true, but I'm going to post about it and say I'm really disturbed about it. Right? And when you do that, what are you actually doing according to the Quran? Al-Fahisha. Allah here says, people of excellence, yajtanibuna kaba'ir al-ithm wal fawahish. I got to save myself from temptation, but I've also got to save myself from the ugly deeds that spread ugliness among humanity. That's all included inside of this word. This is actually one of the most remarkable phrases that describes our commitment to the law of Allah and the morality given by Allah. Law and morality, two separate things. Al-Kaba'ir al ithm cover the law. Al-Fawahish covers the morality. Hey guys, you just watched a small clip of me explaining the Qur'an in depth as part of the Deeper Look series. Studying the Qur'an in depth can seem like a really intimidating thing that's only meant for scholars. Our job at Bayyana is to make deeper study of the Qur'an accessible and easy for all of you. So take us up on that challenge. Join us for this study, the deeper look of the Qur'an, for this surah and many other surahs on BayinaTV.com under the Deeper Look section.